Hello, Appalachian Championship Wrestling fans. We're back again from the ACW compound. This is Mike Kelly. And I'm Nikki Walters. A little bit under the weather, but I would never, ever, ever pass up an opportunity to be here in the compound. We got our opening match. This time we got DD Trash against Awesome Odyssey. DD Trash, former ACW tag champs, um, Awesome Odyssey. They've uh, newcomers to the ACW scene, but they have been very impressive in their appearances thus far. The fans not necessarily giving them the warmest welcome, but it takes a little while to win over the fans. Ron Mathis not giving them the warmest welcome either with that big forearm across the jaw to Chris Copeland. The fans letting everybody know who they're rooting for in this match. They're always solidly behind DD Trash, always. Wow, look at that strength of Mathis. He's had Copeland up for 20, 30 seconds. Meanwhile, Bruce with the abdominal stretch on Jack Andrews. Mathis deposits Copeland on the mat. Saying hi to everybody at home, DD Trash. Going back to that Ron Mathis strength. He doesn't look like a bodybuilder, but I would venture to say he's stronger than a lot of bodybuilders. Yes. He's got uh, that uh, Appalachian kind of strength. That Appalachian farm strength, yeah. yes. <laughs> Some of the strongest people in the world, they don't look like bodybuilders, but their tendons, their joints and everything, you know, like... Like, look at the relative ease that he's tossing these guys around with. And Bruce is no slouch either. <laughs> these guys spend a lot of time in the gym. <laughs> Mathis getting these fans fired up. Awesome out. Odyssey asking for a timeout. They don't realize we don't do that here. No timeouts in ACW. <laughs> Big running knee, followed by a swinging neck breaker. Slim Jim not even seeing it all. Busy talking to Bruce Gray. This is a lot to keep up with. It is. There's a lot going on in this one. Senior referee Jim Lawrence, an amazing official. Amazing. But even the best of us can get distracted. Oh, wow. Look at those double-team... Maneuvers by Awesome Odyssey. We were talking about the strength of Ron Mathis and Bruce Gray, but you can't count out the agility of Awesome Odyssey and their youth being on their side. Oh, wow. Look at this. We've talked about Ron Mathis before. I don't expect him to tap out, but this is definitely going to wear him down. Ron looking to Bruce for the big tag. So close yet so far away. Big elbow off the top. One, two. Mathis kicks out at two. Knee to the midsection. Strike to the side of the head. What a feather in the cap of Awesome Odyssey if they could somehow get this win. That would put them right to the top of the, the heap of contenders in the tag team division. Doesn't seem like Ron Mathis is going to allow that to happen. Yet. Big power slam variation. Ron going for that. Going, reaching desperately for that tag. But Awesome Odyssey... Cutting off that ring, using amazing tag team, double teaming maneuvers. I expect to see a lot out of these guys in 2024 in ACW. Oh, going for a Hurricane Rana. Ron Mathis caught him. Power bomb. 
Amazing feat of strength. Listen to those fans. Dee Dee Trash is probably the most popular team in Appalachian Championship Wrestling. Definitely. You can always count on them to get the fans riled up. Former ACW Tag Team Champions defeating Shane Storm and Seth Martin back in 2021. Lost it to the franchise players. Never really got that the rematch that they deserved. And I'd expect to see that one maybe coming up in 2024. I know the fans would be very excited for that. Big knee by Bruce. Up to the second rope. He's hooking those arms. Wow. Su variation of a suplex. That's one thing about DD Trash. They are in sync. They've been working together for so long. It's almost like they can read each other's minds. Masters of tag team wrestling. Oh, going for that double spike pile driver. But Bruce... That was close, Nikki Walters. Might have uh, made Ron Mathis a little angry there, it looks like. I think Ron Mathis wakes up angry and, then, <laughs> and just gets angrier as the day goes on. <laughs> wow. I'm telling you what, this awesome odyssey, big splash off the top. Mathis kicking out at two and a half. This is turning into quite the contest. Awesome Odyssey is one, just really one big win away. Well, I don't know what to say about that. If you let yourself get frustrated like that, that may not bode well when you're facing a team with the experience of DD Trash. Yeah, you got to keep your emotions in check and focus on the task at hand. You slip up for three seconds against these guys, it's over. Okay, Awesome Odyssey looking to whip DD Trash in each other. Whoa! Bam! Right upside the head, Nikki. DD Trash, too smart for any of these shenanigans. Holy! Look, Bruce, Bruce is a figure four. Mathis with the cross face. Really cramping it. Awesome Odyssey, both taps. Wow, what a spectacular, spectacular finish to an amazing match. DD Trash with another big win. But I say, we haven't seen the last of Awesome Odyssey in ACW. These guys are very, very impressive, Alan. They held their own against some of uh, ACW's favorites. and who knows how long that's going to take. Introducing first, the franchise
a great looking goatee. Do you realize that? Yo, get me. Hey, shut up, stupid. It will knock the piss out of you. I hate your hair. Try to fix it. Would you something. That's offensive, lady. Kelly and Nikki Walters back at the compound we got a four on four elimination survival match this battle go on until the members of one of these teams is completely eliminated starting off with Zayden Kane against Riddick we got team wildfire wildfire Tommy Rich former NWA champion Zayden Kane Cal Poke Paul and Hardway Halloway squaring off against the franchise players. Representing the franchise players, their leader, the franchise Shane Douglas. Riddick in the ring right now taking some punishment from Hardway Halloway. Chris Cannon and handsome Nick Hammer. Cal Pope Paul off the second rope with a big elbow to Riddick's arm. Twisting it up, hasn't lost his cowboy hat. Give him some points for style there, Nikki. <laughs> Cinching up on that arm. Cinching up on that arm. Riddick's been spending some time in the gym. Looks pretty swolled up today. But he's having to face off against uh, the Yee and the Haw there. Hard to do. <laughs> Thank God I'm a country boy. Cowpoke <laughs> Paul. He's been making some waves in ACW. We've been talking about it. Undefeated in singles competition. Oh, lost his cowboy hat, but that's all right. <laughs> going over, big tag to Zayden Kane. Got Zayden going, climbing up to the second rope. Whoa, double boots to that armor Riddick. Chop. Rear back, chopping him again. Bam, a third time. 
A four. Wow, I lost count, Nikki Walters. The franchise players just seem to have uh, sent Riddick in there to take a lot of punishments. Whoa, but Riddick hawking up on Zayden. But not enough. Oh, big kick to Zayden. Getting on top. One, two. Shane Douglas interfering. Hey, but it's all, it's all legal and, until you get caught. <laughs> I think the same thing goes for a lot of things. Nobody <laughs> saw it. It didn't happen. Riddick with a strike to Zayden's throat. I think he might have had a foreign object in there. Zayden got shocking elimination. Yeah. Early elimination. With, we got Team Wildfire is already down four to three. Zayden Kane has been eliminated. There, there must have been a foreign object or something going on there. I mean, would it surprise you at all? Yeah, we got a former ACW international champion, former ACW tag champion going down in the early goings of this match. Wildfire Tommy Rich going after Riddick. Bam, right upside the head. Wildfire. Former NWA champ, a legend in the pro wrestling business, blasted Riddick's head against that brick wall. Wait, they're brawling into the back. Referee Jim. Referee Jim with the count. Wow. Riddick and Tommy Wildfire Rich both eliminated. Cal Pope Paul just holding his head there, wondering what's just happened. The franchise players up three to two now. Now, this match will go on until one side is completely eliminated. And right now, the odds are stacked in the favor of the franchise players. Up three competitors to two. And Nick Hamrick cranking on that knee of Halloway. Getting a big tag. Who's coming in? Big Chris Cannon. Cannon jacked to the gills. This guy lives in the gym. But Hardway Halloway is undeterred. Hardway Halloway is a monster. Look at the size of this guy. I expect to see some big things from him, not only in Appalachian Championship Wrestling, but in the in the wrestling world in general. This guy's going places. And about the nicest guy you could ever meet, too. That's the thing. Well, just as long as you don't make him mad. Right, you stay on his good side. You stay on his good side. And I don't think the franchise players have been doing a very good job <laughs> of staying on his good side. Do they stay on anyone's good side is the question. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> They're not here to make friends. <laughs> They're here to make money, not make friends. Double teaming on Hardway Halloway. Wow, can you imagine if they get if they get it down to three to one? That would be almost insurmountable odds. Wow! Halloway! That a drill. Wow, big chop. Did you hear that's echoing <laughs> through the compound? I think I felt that in my chest. Big whip into the corner. Halloway, bam! Big boot! Wow, did you see how high up that foot? His foot hit Nick Hamrick's forehead. And those aren't small boots either. I think those are probably special ordered <laughs> from the big foot and tall. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this tag team maneuver. Picking up Cal Pope. Body slam on top of Nick Hamrick. These guys have been teaming up a little bit. The Buffalo Boys, Cowpoke Paul and Hardway Halloway have been making some waves in the tag team division in ACW. But can they beat the franchise players down three to two in this survival elimination tag match? Wow, that chop. Now working on the arms, Cal Poke, stretching them. 
forearm to the jaw. Nick you Hamrick know. being a little cocky there, I think. Well, Nick Hamrick is always cocky. I don't know what you'd even call that move other than being cocky. Whoa, maybe a little too cocky as Cowpoke moved out of the way. Now Cowpoke with some short clothesline into the corner. He's going for that suplex. Whipped him over. Deposited him hard on the mat. Ride him, Cowboy. Yeehaw, Cowpoke. Got that big tag to Halloway. Let's watch this big, giant man. Whoa, look at that double team maneuver. One, two, three. Nick Hammer's been eliminated, Nikki Walters. That's what happens when you let your ego get the best of you. Kind of clouds your judgment a little bit. We just saw that play out. Franchise players may be getting a little too overconfident with the numbers game. Now... It's two on two. It's two on two. The, as Dick Vickers and Betty D. Uh, I guess with those guys in the corner, they still have the numbers advantage. Maybe not legally, but the franchise players don't always go about things legally. Well, the franchise players have uh, Betty D on their side, but Calpook Paul and Harvey Holloway have the entire. Fan base. A, the entire the ACW universe, the yeah. fan base of ACW. I don't think there's any question on whoever on who the fans of ACW are rooting for. Right. Franchise players like to play some mind games. Maybe the Buffalo Boys of Cowpoke and Halloway taking a little page out of their book, doing a little a bit of their own mind games. Getting under the skin of the franchise players, but incredible impact on that kick from Chris Camp. Okay, spinning elbow smash. Cowpoke Paul trying to shake loose the numbness. This cannon plants that knee several times into the upper back and neck of Calpo. Whoa! Cannon taking a page out of the franchise Shane Douglas' book with an excellently executed belly-to-belly. -belly. Getting cocky, not, not hooking the leg. Calpo kicks out at two. Here comes the franchise in like a vulture. Picking the bones of Cowpoke Paul. Cowpoke appearing to get... He, he's getting pretty beat up and pretty worn down by the franchise players. Whipped into the ropes. Reversal. Roll up. Two. Three. Wow. Shocking elimination. Shane Douglas has been eliminated by Cowpoke Paul. Shane Douglas can't even believe it. You better believe it. Cowpoke Paul continue, continues to move up the, the rankings. And that, that, that might be one of Cowpoke Paul's most impressive ACW moments to date. Getting a three on the legendary franchise Shane Douglas. So now the numbers game is in Cowpoke Paul and Hardway Halloway's advantage. But I don't think that Chris Cannon, he, he, he's not going to give up. Halloway is just dying to get in there and have his turn at it. Big elbow. Calpo kick out at two. He's, he's feeding a little bit off the energy of the fans there. Listen to him getting behind Cowpoke Paul. Well, you can't damage the man's rope in hand. <laughs> he needs that. Most definitely. Abdominal stretch. Chris Cannon digging those knuckles into the ribs of Cowpoke. Big strike to the ribs. Working him over. Backbreaker. 
Working those ribs, working that back. Cowpokes getting pretty beat up. If he can get that tag to Howway, that'd be... Big strike to the jaw. I'll say it's about Chris Cannon. He ain't scared of nobody. He almost seems more confident now that he's the only one in there. Chris Cannon, ACW International Champion, and also part of the, the franchise players, the Bluegrass Tag Champs, the ACW Tag Team Champions, the ACW Six Man Tag Team Champions. With the controversial rule to where any of the members can defend those titles. Rolling Cowpoke up. One, two. Whoa, Cowpoke with a reversal. One, two. Wow, Cowpoke, wow. Cowpoke Paul with a shocking win. Cowpoke Paul has single handedly put down the franchise and Chris Cannon in the same. He's going to be shooting up the rankings in ACW and Appalachian Championship Wrestling in this monster Hardway Howway. What a what a team! Buffalo boys, Buffalo boys, Buffalo boys, Buffalo boys. This might end up getting them a tag title shot against the franchise players. Whoa, Michelle. <laughs> Speaking of clean, let's try to keep this clean. Let's try to keep this clean for our YouTube channel. <laughs> the fans are riled, I think it's safe to say. That's what happens when your guys win, though. It gives you a little bit of oomph behind you. Dick Vickers probably don't want none of Michelle. <laughs> but even though the friend franchise. Well, you should have. We have I wasn't sure side which bald-headed beep she was talking to. Joshua Bishop, not really what I would consider a people person. <laughs> He's got excellent wrestling skills. His people skills, maybe not so much. I think intense icon was kind of what we were seeing right there. He's he's living it. Very intense. This man is very intense. Well, I don't know if I would go with Miss. Did you miss me? How could you not me. miss me, ACW? Because the ACW icon, the intense icon, Josh Bishop's back, baby. Yeah. And I got a little Sunday treat for you. And you were right there that were booty when I came out. It might be your lucky day. So I'm going to throw out a little interim... Open challenge okay, to anyone, including you, in the Carhartt lettering <laughs> t-shirt that wants to step in there with the intense icon, feel free. Or there's any J Brones in the back that are feeling like it's their lucky day. Open challenge. Oh, dear God. I'm yeah. way bigger than him. Oh. Wait, Bishop, wait, Bishop, hey, Bishop, Bishop, shut up. Bishop, 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 you're shot. I'll put a beat down on all of y'all at the same time. Oh, yeah. How's that sound, sweetheart? 
How's that sound? You are so It doesn't seem like you were so well received by your ACW fans. You doing good? You doing good, sweetheart? You don't call me sweet. You smell, you smell that cologne? It's nice, isn't it? It's nice, isn't it? You smell that? Yeah? Uh, nice. What you is seen these red stuff? You know how much this is? This guy's stupid! Hey! This guy's stupid! I'm not stupid. I'm very intelligent. I'm very intelligent. Sweetheart, this jacket cost $6,000. $6,000 this jacket cost me. And whenever I take it off in that ring, and I have that referee take off my jacket, and I put a beat down on Josh Bishop, and I take his title, he's going to tell me exactly how gorgeous I am. Isn't that right, baby? Isn't that right, sweetheart? That's what you're going to do. Because you're a little punk is what you are. You're a little punk, and you're going to get beat down by a generational talent, by a once-in-a-lifetime athlete, and the main character of ACW. Mike Kelly, joined by Nikki Walters, two salty individuals you were just talking to at the interview board. Yes, definitely salty, and I have to say, like, it's hard for the rest of us to fit in this room because of the size of Gregory's head. He's pretty full of himself, but he, he's, he can back it up. He can back it up. He's a mean, he don't look mean, but he is a mean man. But he's going up against maybe the meanest man in Appalachian Championship Wrestling, Josh Bishop, paintbrush in the back of his head, being disrespectful. This is about the only time that you'll see a velvet in the compound. $6,000, air quotes, worth of velvet. If I had $6,000, I don't know if I'd buy Jack with it, but <laughs> that's just me. I'm, I grew up in poor rural Appalachia. <laughs> $6,000 might get you two cars or maybe even a trailer. Right. I can't hear. I can't hear. Josh Bishop. There's a lot you can say about his attitude being terrible. But there's no denying he his success, and he ain't afraid of nobody. Giving out another open challenge in defense of 
the interim title. Don't let him know that I called it the interim title. As Josh Bishop, where he was never pinned or submitted for that title, he still considers himself the real Appalachian Championship Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. The showdown with Bobby Beverly on the horizon. Little, little, little salty is what we, <laughs> as we were talking. Josh Bishop, very salty. The best bleep in wrestler alive. I think we'll make well, that edit. We'll make that edit now. We will. Uh, <laughs> two big old boys here. Josh Bishop and Bobby Beverly. Set to collide on the weekend of April 12th. Interim title versus the reigning heavyweight champion, Bev versus Bishop. April 12th. And then in an extreme rules match, April 13th. April 12th, Oak Hill, West Virginia. April 13th, Golly Bridge, West Virginia. The fourth annual Spider Crowley. Crowley Memorial Show. I think by the end of that weekend, there'll be only one person claiming to be the ACW Heavyweight Champion. Josh Bishop, he'll fight anybody you put in front of. He don't care. If it's a fan favorite, he'll fight Ricky Morton, but he'll fight the best. He will fight anybody. The man just likes to fight. He seems to get like sick joy out of it. it, it and I think he gets a sick joy out of pain. He enjoys getting, getting beat up a little bit. But he always knows, for the most part, he can dish out more than he's going to take. Hence his winning record. And probably his confidence that he brings to the ring every single time. Or just Gregory twisting that arm. Cinching up on it. Referee Cameron keeping a close eye on the action. When you got two guys with the open disdain for the rule book like you have in here today, you, you can just basically assume there's going to be some problems. What's he looking at here? He's not. He's not looking at a. Wow! Fall away slam on that big old boy. That's an impressive feat. That's some power behind Joshua Bishop. And now the Joshua Bishop strut. We know it well. He's pretty. He's pretty full of himself. <laughs> but he, with success comes comes confidence. Look at him. He's got his hand. Clinch around the throat of Gregory. Gregory with a poke to the eye. Big clothesline. Did you hear that impact? Pounded on the head. Can you imagine? What an upset. If, what an upset this would be. Gorgeous Gregory. If he wins the interim title. It's going to be him going up against the Bev for, in the title unification match. I'd say Joshua Bishop's going to do all he can to make sure that doesn't happen because it's personal now. If anybody out there doesn't know the backstory, Bobby Beverly is the current ACW heavyweight champion. He ended the reign of Josh Bishop by winning the guarantee briefcase and cashing it in again in Josh Bishop's mat, match against Matthew Justice. Beverly pinned Matthew Justice. Josh Bishop has never been pinned or submitted in singles competition in ACW. That's why he still considers himself the heavyweight champion. But when Bobby Beverly was injured, ACW management decided, rather than strip Beverly of the title, to crown an interim champion. 
Bishop defeated Ron Mathis for that title. And now we've got a showdown coming up. Beverly versus Bishop. That is if Josh Bishop can get through Gorgeous Gregory this week at the compound. Gregory, big suplex on Bishop. Big suplex. Two. Bishop kicking out two and three quarters. We almost had a new interim heavyweight champion there, Nikki Walters. That's fine. All you're doing is pissing him off. The fans aren't behind it, though. The fans don't believe it could be. Hey, my name is Gorgeous Gregory. And you suck. You suck. Shut up, Gregory. And I like to spike people's heads into the mat. The fans, I believe, picking the less of two evils as far as who they're deciding to root for in this match. It shows you their disdain for Gorgeous Gregory if they're willing to get behind Joshua Bishop to this degree. Gorgeous Gregory has become one of the most hated men in Appalachian Championship Wrestling in almost record time. I expect to see some big things out of Gregory in 2024, Appalachian Championship Wrestling. He's got a, he's got a big tag team with Jason Hendricks. They're making waves in ACW. But if he could beat Josh Bishop here today for the ACW interim title, that would probably be one of that would probably be the biggest victory of his young career. Bishop, chopping, punching, throwing Gregory in the ropes. Oh, black hole slam. Gregory, Gregory weaseled his way out of that one a little bit. Bishop didn't get the full impact, but that, that uh, now going for the choke slam. Wow. He landed that one, that's for sure. And on top, one, two. A little bit of an arrogant pin there from an arrogant man. If he would have hooked that leg, it might have been the three. Bishop calling for exit 187. His finishing maneuver. I haven't seen anyone get up from that. But Gregory, face first with Bishop. Gregory hooking that leg. One, two. So close. All of that jawing around with the fans is giving Bishop time to recover and get his bearings under him again. Gorgeous Gregory might regret this time he's taken away from the match to talk to the fans. The fans of ACW getting firmly behind Josh Bishop. I don't, I don't know what quite to say about that. Oh, big headbutt. Bishop, he's going, he's going for exit 187. He's going for exit 187. Wow. Exit 187. No survivors. Joshua Bishop retains the ACW interim heavyweight title. The showdown with Bobby Beverly looming on the horizon.
them at the ACW compound and the fans are greeting you much like they do live, tell us how you're going to earn their respect today. You suck, Joe Dirt, suck! Joe Dirt, suck! You can't even Joe Dirt, suck! Up. Joe Dirt, suck! You think I need sucks. to earn anyone's respect here? Yeah! I don't need to earn anything. You have all may notice I didn't come out with a normal getup on today. Yeah. That's because, ladies and gentlemen, clean. the poster boy is dead. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not. The poster boy is dead, and a storm is coming. A storm is coming, baby. And the night it starts with Marino Tangalia no, and the Super 8. I don't have to say it right. Huh? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I am Jason Hendricks, and I am it. Welcome back to the compound. Whew. What do you want to say to the fans? Whew. Feels good to be back in the compound. So this man wants to talk about respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. You want to get it from me? Marino T? Marino Tenaglia? Yeah, all right. You want to talk about a storm? Well, I've been riding the edge of a lightning bolt my whole life. And we're gonna do it again right here. You want this Super H championship? No, we don't. Hmm. Let's see if you can get it. ACW fans, our main event today for the ACW Super H title, the defending champion, Marino Tanaglia, against Jason Hendricks. Jason Hendricks struggling with Marino Tanaglia's name a little bit there. He's struggling with Marino Tanaglia in general right now. <laughs> Just got rolled up for a two count. Marino tearing through the ACW roster. He's been turning away all challengers for the Super H title. But he has yet to go one-on-one -on -one with Jason Hendricks. Jason Hendricks, low-key, probably one of the more dangerous competitors in Appalachian Championship Wrestling. He's just looking for that one big signature win. And this could be it. He's definitely one of the competitors that ACW's fan base loves to hate. Definitely. As you can tell, they've got a little nickname for him. 
Not a flattering one. Not a flattering one. And they, they, they've got a they've got a, a good nickname for Marino. Uh, the Roman noodles, as you hear them saying. The Joe Dirt nickname that they have given to Jason Hendricks, probably not as respectful or affectionate. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's uh, Marino's nickname is said with love. And Jason's is coming from the other place, yeah. not from a place of respect or love. <laughs> we'll we'll leave it at that. Roll them up one, two, wow. Going off the second rope. Wow. Whip Jason Hendricks around. Big drop kick to the chin. Marino, some of these moves he comes up with, I don't even know what to call them. I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I think he makes some of this stuff up on the fly. He's like a wrestling savant. He's one of the sharpest, most crisp wrestlers that I've ever seen in person. Watch out, scaling up these ropes, getting the fans involved. One thing about Marino, he respects and loves the fans of Appalachian Championship Wrestling. And that respect and love is reciprocated. Oh, Jason Hendricks dropping Marino throat first on the top rope. Might be wasting some valuable time there. There he is, kicking out at the one. He gave Marino too much time to recover. You can't do that with an athlete like this. He's still feeling that. He's still feeling his throat. He, he dropped him right throat first on that top rope. Big shot to the ribs. Marino's not going to give up. Elbowed him back, but then Jason Hendricks with another kick. Back to antagonizing the fans. Physically, this is a pretty even matchup. Marino with a definite advantage in the experience department. But where Marino is more of a sportsman and prefers not to take the shortcuts, Jason Hendricks doesn't have that same philosophy of wrestling. Jason Hendricks will do whatever it takes to score the win. Those fans giving all that energy to Marino Tanaglia. Wow, chin breaker. Marino going off the ropes. Oh, Hendricks ducked under that clothesline. This match is so hard hitting, it's shaking our monitors and shaking our cameras. They're leaving it all there on the mat. Referee James Lawrence staying on top of the action. But Jason Hendricks is going to give plenty of stuff to keep Jim busy. He, when he doesn't break the rules, he's bending them as far as they'll possibly be. You know, whooping. Getting whipped in the ropes. Oh, a lot of impact on that back. Marino holding that Super H title since October of 2020. Wow! Marino holding that ACW Super H title since October of 2022. Changing blows. Marino is starting to get the upper hand. Kick to the midsection. Jason Hendricks. Picking up Marino. Let's see what he's got going on here. Marino! Sunset flip variation. Two count. Not quite enough. What's he looking for here? A suplex. Small package by Marino. Two count. Marino off the ropes. There it is. Elbow to the 
back of the head. Hooking that leg. Two. Another kick out at two from Marino Tanagli. These fans solidly behind Marino. That seems to be energizing him to keep going. Doesn't want to let his fan base down. Jason Hendricks going to fall for that move. Oh, double clothesline, both competitors down. It's been an excellent matchup. Referee Jim counting both men down. Marino with a kip up. Strike to the head. Another a forearm to the chin. Ducked under that clothesline. Look how fast he is. Look at the oh, DDT variation on the apron. That had to take a lot out of Hendrix's tank. Marino shows some love to the fans of ACW. And then going up to the top rope, this guy's so fast. Big frog splash. Big frog splash by Marino. Oh, kicking out the two. I've seen that finish off quite a few competitors in ACW. Props to Jason Hendricks being able to kick out from that. But Jason Hendricks surviving out of spite at this point. Just to throw it in the fans' faces. Marino, is he maybe looking at a super kick? Oh, Jason Hendricks ducked under. Big super kick by Jason Hendricks. On top, two. Oh, Marino barely kicks out. Barely kicks out. Jason Hendricks inches away from becoming the new ACW Super H champion. Unhappy with referee James Lawrence right now. One thing about James Lawrence, he calls it right down the middle. He doesn't call no, he doesn't choose any favorites. And he's not gonna be intimidated. Oh, roll up. Hendrix kicks out at two. Oh, bridge. What's it going? I think back, he's going for the backslide. He's going for the backslide. Jason Hendrix with a low blow. I'll tell you what, Jason Hendrix, he's taken breaking the rules. It's almost like an art form. He feeds off of it. And he does not care. I could, I've talked to Jason Hendricks a few times. He does not care what anyone thinks. He's just looking to work his way to the top of the card, get bigger paychecks, bigger bookings, and he'll do anything to achieve that goal. And it looks like he might be getting ready for a super kick to Marino. Telegraphing that move. Whoa! Marino, the big kick. He's getting on top. Pick a leg. One, two, three. Marino Tanaglia with another successful defense of the ACW Super H title. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We got some big dates coming up. Check our Facebook, Instagram for updates on these shows. April 12th, Oak Hill, West Virginia. April 13th, Golly Bridge, West Virginia. April 27th, Bluegrass Wrestling Con, Ashland, Kentucky. And if you're checking out this video and you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we invite you to do that too because you don't want to miss out on any of the action. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming up. This is Mike Kelly. And Nikki Walters. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.